Reverend Dr. Nichelle R. Guidry is a spiritual daughter of New Creation Christian Fellowship of San Antonio, Texas. She is a graduate of Clark Atlanta University, Yale Divinity School, and Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary. She currently serves as the Dean of the Chapel and the Director of the Wisdom Center at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. She is the creator of She Preaches, a virtual community and professional development organization that aspires to uplift African-American millennial women in ministry, and she has contributed to numerous publications. She is a proud member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. CNBC is pleased to welcome back Reverend Dr. Nichelle Guidry. Good afternoon to my model and my mentor in ministry, the Reverend Dr. Mama Gina M. Stewart, to my sisters in ministry, Reverend Dr. Stacey Dandridge, Sean Davenport, and to you, the incredible, mighty congregation of Christ Missionary Baptist Church. I send you greetings and send you love all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. And I am so thankful for this opportunity to share this Lenten reflection with you. As we are preparing to um, hear the reflection, I invite you to hear the word of God um, from Isaiah 58, verses 13 through 14. I'll be reading from the New International Version and God's, re God's word reads as follows. If you keep your feet from breaking the Sabbath and from doing as you please on my holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the Lord's holy day honorable, and if you honor it by not going your own way and not doing as you please or speaking idle words, then you will find your joy in the Lord. I'll cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. One more time, verse 14. Then you will find your joy in the Lord. And I'll cause you to ride in triumph on the heights of the land and to feast on the inheritance of your father, Jacob. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. At the beginning of Lent, I noticed a lot of public expressions of weariness going into Lent 2021. I read poignant reflections from friends and family who felt that they didn't have anything left to sacrifice to God for Lent. After a year of so much loss and in a season of so much continued suffering, I felt that the general pulse of the people might have been something along the lines of, how much more could God want from me? This week we're hitting the year mark of this COVID-19 pandemic and living in quarantine. And for almost a full 365 days, many people haven't seen their families or their friends. Some have lived in isolation due to distance from their loved ones or due to pre-existing health conditions. Some have been trying to make it on a wing and a prayer as they have witnessed loss after loss. Some are still tending to the very real racial wounds of trauma from watching George Floyd die by asphyxiation in the streets of Minneapolis and struggling with the feeling of vulnerability knowing that Breonna Taylor was gunned down in her own home, in her own bed. Some are still healing from COVID-19 slowly. Some are still mourning the loss of someone that they knew who was in the number of over 500,000 COVID-related deaths in this country. Some are still holding on through personal events and circumstances that remain unspoken and untold. Therefore, many arrived to the season of Lent, especially weary, especially tired, and especially empty. And as Lent has gone on this year, I wonder if this is just the right, the appropriate, and the perfect posture for Lent. 
Often we enter into Lent with a sheer determination that I will get through these 40 days without eating meats or without eating sugar or without having sex or without scrolling more than 10 minutes a day on my social media. And the list goes on of the things we set out to do for Lent in the name of fasting. We set the goal out and before we know it, the heart of the goal is to accomplish it, not to attempt it. Before we know it, the heart of the goal is to add yet another trophy to our chest of, of righteousness and to add another accolade to our name and no longer to move closer to the heart of God. Often we enter into Lent on autopilot. Uh, we say, I've been fasting for the last decade or more. It's what I do every single year. It's a tradition that I don't even think about anymore because it's just what I do. It's just what my church does. It's what you're supposed to do. And before we know it, our tradition has become God. As if God doesn't challenge our traditionalism every single day, especially when the tradition has taken God's place in our lives. And I certainly think that a part of the significance of living through a global pandemic and all that that means and all that that has rendered in our lives is to cause us to sit with what traditions um, are ours to hold on to and what traditions are ours to release. And I agree that because of this, this Lent 2021 is different. We are at a turning point, friends and family. We cannot do this and we cannot do life. We cannot do faith. We cannot even do ministry as we normally would. And perhaps we shouldn't. Perhaps it's time to undo our Lenten practices and our sense of our worth. Perhaps it's time for us to undo them and untangle them from a deep, abiding sense of having to do something else in order to please God. Perhaps we have to relinquish the idea that we have to perform highly and perfectly in order for God to love us. See, sometimes we get God mixed up with this capitalist patriarchal machine that dictates to us that we always have to be doing something to be worth something that we always have to be producing something to be productive and worthy human beings, that we can't stop and rest, that we can't stop and bask in the last accomplishment because we're already hungry for the next one, that we can't even stop to mourn the things we've lost in our lives because it's, it's the capitalist thing to do to just keep going, keep pushing, keep trying, perhaps we weren't feeling like doing this this year. Perhaps we weren't feeling this idea right now because it wasn't a good idea in the first place. And today I wanna to stand against firmly, I want to stand against the voice that would seek to reduce us to machines in the name of holiness. I wanna stand against the voice that would reduce our righteousness down to deeds and things that we can check off of our lists of things to do and lists of things that we have accomplished and the voice that would seek to conflate our worth with our work. This word in Isaiah is calling us in a new direction, y'all. It's calling us into a necessary direction and potentially into a revolutionary direction. This word is calling us to Sabbath. It is calling us to rest. It is calling us to sacred pause. It is calling us aside. It is calling us to a time of refreshing renewal in the presence of God. God created us. And in so doing, God is well aware that there is only so much that we can do, only so much that these bodies of ours can withstand, only so much that our spirits can hold on to before we need to stop, to breathe, to let go, and just to be to be with our tears, to be with our hearts, to be with our honest truths, to be with our needs, to be in prayer 
talking to God, to be in silence, listening for God, to be in meditation, reflecting on the movement of God in our lives, to just be, to be in our sleeping, to be in our journaling and our writing and our reading for leisure, to be in the walk we take up and down the street to get the fresh air so we're not stuck in the house all day, to be in that nap, to be in the wonderful meal, to be on the FaceTime with the family and the friends that we cannot physically touch, to just be. And in so being, showing up for Sabbath. Could it really be today that we've been confused about this Lent thing all along? Could it really be that God wants us to come into God's presence in prayer and in lament and in stillness, not so we can check it off of our list of things to do, but so that God can genuinely pour into us? Could it be that in the times where all we can do is pray, that prayer is all we need to do? Could it really be possible that all God wants us to do is show up every day, giving the best that we've got and leaving the rest of the details and the rest of the work and the rest of the efforts to God? Could it be that God so wants to fill us up so that we can give to one another and to our communities out of our overflow? Rather than out of our depletion or even worse, out of compulsion, what a beautiful thing it is to walk with a savior who loves us enough for us to just be, just be, just be who we are as we are, who asks us first for our hearts, not to exhaust us, but to heal us, who says to us every day, come unto me, you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. What a beautiful thing it is to walk with a savior who models a better way by sleeping in the belly of a ship, even in the midst of a storm, who shows us that it is a holy thing to do to say, no, I'm not able to do that at this time. A savior who asks for what we have, who accepts our best and multiplies our efforts so that we can make an impact in this world. A savior who asks us for one day of Sabbath each week to turn aside from the cares of life and the toils of life to be renewed in the love and in the peace and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And is it possible, beloveds, that God is inviting us now to imagine what it would look like to take a day of Sabbath and live into a season of Sabbath and even a lifestyle of Sabbath. Because maybe when we can no longer do it the way that it's always been done, it simply means that it's time to do something different, to move away from the exhaustion and move in the direction of joy. If you read the scriptures preceding verses 13 and 14, God's critique of the people is not just that they were doing too much, but that they weren't doing what was right. And maybe we've gotten so confused about the doing because we've just been doing without stopping to reflect, because we've been doing, 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 and not being, 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 and becoming something different. If we can move away from that addiction to doing and to producing, if we can disrupt the voice of capitalism that wires us every day to work like we are, we are enslaved to these jobs and to these titles, if we can move away from that and we can move towards some Sabbath, there's a promise in the text and it says that then you will be filled with the joy of the Lord. If we take this Sabbath, 
if we take the time to stop and to be in the presence of the Lord, to take the time to receive the gift of God's heart towards us, then joy is inevitable. Hmm. Joy to live, joy to rest, joy to love, joy to serve, joy to give, joy to give and to show up and to love and to live out of the overflow of what God lavishly pours into us when we stop and say, fill me up, God. Fill me up, God. I think this is what it means for the joy of the Lord to be our strength. This joy that we have, the world did not give it. This world that tells us to do and do and do and do some more, even when you feel like you don't want to or you can't anymore, joy don't come from that. Joy comes from the Lord that says, I love you as you are. So come unto me, all you who are weary, all you who are tired, all you who are exhausted, all you who are burnt out, all you who are frazzled, all you who are burning the candle at both ends, all you who are one second away from a breakdown, all you who are one second away from snapping on somebody because you ain't got no more patience. Come unto me. <laughs> uh, and I will give you rest. And in your rest, I'll give you joy. God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God.